Welcome to Kaizen Time, part of the Blood, Sweat, and Business podcast, where we provide constant improvement to businesses through timely, actionable financial solutions. Do you want answers to your financial questions? Email us at bsp at kaizencpas.com. I'm your host, Mark Valeski. Now let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Kaizen Time. I'm joined by Eric Jorn, a partner here at the firm. How are you doing, Eric? Wonderful. How are you? I'm doing fabulous. A while ago, we talked about BOI reporting. Yep. And basically, it was like, be aware of it, but hold on, right? Mm -hmm. Where is it standing right now? We are still in the same exact place. So be aware, hold on. Um, We'll kind of add to that. So uh, first, actually, let's recap what BOI reporting is. Good call. Yep. So BOI reporting, uh, beneficial owner information reporting. Uh, So that's reporting information reporting due to FINRA. Uh, which is financial uh, crime network. Um, and what they are, what they're essentially doing is making sure that people aren't creating fraudulent companies. So they want to make sure you report information to them to help prevent fraud happening inside of the financial system. And this was a problem. thus, why this has all been created. Correct. Right? Correct. So um, last year they created a law that all businesses by one, one of 25, submit information. Uh, if you are an LLC, if you are a corporation, essentially, if you are registered with the state as an, as a legal entity, uh, you must report, mm-hmm. um, more importantly, if you create a new entity, they give you 60 days to report that information from the date in which you've created it. So that timeline's a little bit faster. So we're seeing a lot of people still as per usual, every year this happens, we're opening a new entity, right? We're creating, we're buying real estate. We are, uh, buying another business, we're starting a business, all sorts of reasons to create new entities. You're on the clock. So when you're having that attorney set up that new entity for you, ask them to handle the BOI reporting, um, or uh, you can do it yourself. It's not a very complex uh, process. Where things come into play is they do require that you update information when it gets changed and they give you a 30 day clock. So if my driver's license updates and I say I move, mm-hmm. I need to update my address with FinCEN um, and let them know where I'm at. Um, if I bring in a new partner into my business, I got to let them know once I'm registered. So that's why we're saying for your established entities that don't have the deadline till one one twenty five, let's wait because we still want to see how this program shakes out. What we fear is that there's a lot of administrative burden being created and they just don't have the resources to handle this program. Um, In fact, recently a federal court in uh, Alabama ruled that it was on the program is unconstitutional. Um, That's just a peek inside of what we think is going to happen. Uh, We're suspecting it is. And what we don't want to do is get a whole bunch of work done, create all this obligation and then the program get pulled. So are are we kind of getting the vibe that this is kind of like, uh, the carriage in front of the horse? Like they want, they want all this reporting. They, they want, I think actually what they're trying to do is be serious about this, right? Yep. In, in an effort to cut down on all this racketeering and such. Yep. And it's kind of like, now that we did that, we're going to see how we (laughs) kind of do this. Right. (laughs) Like many things, right? Ideas are great. It's a great idea. It's going to help prevent some, some issues, some crimes, However, execution is the hard part. And again, I don't think they have the resources to, to execute the program properly. Um, I mean, since COVID, really, we've seen a lot of things happen this way. And the programs get ended or they get cut short or they're just kind of left as a big mess. Um, well, and I will say this, and please correct me if I'm wrong. A lot of these racketeering type schemes, they're newer businesses, right? Correct. They're being created. So if they're doing this on the front end, when stuff is created... They're yep. addressing it. A lot of these established business, a 20 year old business is probably not going to be one of these companies that they're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and the ruling in Alabama does not really affect anybody except for those people that were uh, involved in, in that case. Otherwise everybody else is unaffected. It's still status quo. If you open a new entity, you still got to do your BOI reporting. Um, and assuming that nothing changes with the program, we're still going to have to have them filed then, by the first of the year, um, we're going to look to make some decisions around whether or not we can help and assist with this process um, over the next few months. So 
we'll continue to record these and provide updates as new updates are available and let everybody know where our stance lies inside the program. And uh, again, who, who does this affect, Eric? Is it just small businesses or is it everybody that's a business? Yeah, yeah. So it's going to affect anybody who has a business that is registered with the state, um, especially from our listener base. There's going to be some applicable large employers that are not going to be affected by this because obviously you're not going to have a fraudulent company that's going to employ you know, 500, a thousand people. Um, so there are some disqualifications and certain types of businesses that are not affected largely businesses that are already regulated by FINRA. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're not going to do double duty on a business that's already regulated by FINRA. Again, most of our listening base will be affected. So I would not rely on those rules to have a conversation about it before you say, Hey, I'm not even going to bother with this. Um, but again, keep tight. We'll provide you guys with an update as soon as we know more. so our best piece of advice is, again, be aware of it, yep. be prepared for it, keep in touch with your accountant. Yep, be in yep. touch with your CPA, and uh, you know we'll all, we'll all roll up our sleeves and get these things done if we need to uh, come end of the year. Yeah. Well, and as you said, it's not overly complex, but it is something that you don't want to be trying to address at the last second. Yep, yep. We don't want to wait to the last second, but we also don't want to be too early and spend a bunch of time, effort, and resources <laughs> yeah, right. to – to get something done on a program that will end early. Cause again, we've seen that happen time over time and um, that's our current position. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. You've been listening to Kaizen time, part of the blood, sweat and business podcast. If you like what you heard, subscribe and leave a five-star review. This podcast has been brought to you by Kaizen CPAs plus advisors, providing advisory and accounting services to help you grow your business. Learn more at kaizencpas.com or email us at bsb at kaizencpas.com.